Last lesson, we introduced the profit maximizing rule for resource employment, which said that firms should hire workers up to the point where the revenue earned by the last worker hired equaled the cost of hiring that worker, or where MRP equals MRC. You can see that in this graph here. In this market, there are 100 bakeries employing four workers each. There is a total level of employment in the market of 400 bakers at an equilibrium wage rate of $15. Notice that the individual baker can hire as many workers as it wants from zero to eight without changing the wage rate. In other words, it's a wage taking firm. It's so small compared to the entire market for bakers that it can't affect the market wage rate. So in this lesson, what I want to talk about is how changes in the demand for labor can affect the profit maximizing level of employment and the market equilibrium wage rate and level of employment. So let's tell a story in which the demand for labor among all the firms in this market increases and how it affects the equilibrium wage rate and level of employment. Remember from an even earlier lesson that the demand for a resource is derived from the price of the good that the resource is being used to produce and the productivity of the resource itself. So let's start with the situation here in which the price of bread, the price of bread increases. And this causes the marginal revenue product of bakers, bakers, to increase. Because you might recall that marginal revenue product equals the price of the good being produced, so in this case the price of bread, times the marginal product of labor or the productivity of the bakers themselves. So let's say due to an increase in the price of bread, each individual bakery's demand for labor increases. We're gonna see the demand curve shift out to D1 and MRP1. And since the total demand for labor is basically just the sums of all the individual firm's demands, the market demand for labor is likewise going to increase to D1 equals MRP1. So how does this affect the equilibrium wage rate? Since the price of bread rose and each bakery wished to hire more workers because of the increased marginal revenue product of labor, we're going to see a situation in which the equilibrium wage rate is driven up. Labor becomes scarcer, bakeries need more workers, and they're willing to pay a higher wage rate to get those workers. So in this case, the wage rate equilibrium increases to around $18. And since each individual is a wage taker, each firm sees the wage rate that it has to pay rise as well. And as we see, the higher wage rate means the cost of hiring additional workers rises. So we have an increase in the marginal resource cost. And ultimately, Bakeries will wish to employ five workers each. So this is the new QPM, the profit maximizing quantity, we call that QPM1. And market employment, total employment in the market will increase to 500. So we have a new equilibrium quantity in the market as a whole. So this is the adjustment that takes place in labor markets. If the demand for labor increases by individual firms, it will drive up the market demand for labor and cause the equilibrium wage rate and level of employment to rise. In order for firms to maintain their profit maximizing level of employment, they must hire more workers up to the point where MRP equals MRC. The revenue earned by the last worker hired in this case is $18 and the wage rate is $18. So it costs the firm $18 to hire that last worker, the fifth worker. In fact, the firm now pays all of its workers $18 up from the previous wage rate of $15. But the firm is willing to hire more workers because the price of bread has risen and the revenues that each worker that the firm hires earns the firm has increased. So that's how a change in the demand for labor can arise from a variable such as the change in the price of the good being produced and how when individual employers demand for labor increases, the market demand for labor increases driving up the equilibrium wage rate. So I want to do one more scenario here where not demand, but the supply of labor changes. So in the next scenario, we're going to be looking first at the market because the factors that affect the level of supply of labor in a market may not directly affect the employers themselves because they're determined not by 
firms, but by households who choose to supply labor to a particular market. So recall from our earlier lesson that there are three main determinants of supply for labor. These included wages in competing labor markets, the barriers to entry into a labor market, such as licenses or certifications that may or may not be required, and thirdly, the level of immigration or population growth. If there are more immigrants coming into a country, you'd expect the supply of labor in many different industries to increase. And that's what I want to look at in this scenario. So let's assume here that immigration into this country, or into this city, you could say, immigration increases, leading to an increase in the supply of labor. And this is the market supply. So what we'll see is the market supply of labor increase due to immigration. We'll call this SL1. And now at the original wage rate, notice that at the original wage rate of $15, there are more workers willing to work in this market now, around 600, than the number of jobs that are actually available. So at the original wage rate of $15, there's now a surplus of labor. Now recall from your earlier study of supply and demand that whenever there is an excess supply or a surplus, the market is in disequilibrium. How is the surplus resolved? Well, you'll remember that the price of the good has to fall. And in this case, it's not a good, it's a resource. So the wage rate or the price of labor is going to decrease. And as it does, bakeries are gonna to wish to hire more workers. And fewer of these new immigrants are going to want to be bakers. So the quantity supplied will decrease, the quantity demanded will increase, and will achieve a new equilibrium at a lower wage rate, in this case at $10. So our new equilibrium is wage rate one, WR1, at $10. And the market is in a new equilibrium at about 500 workers. So what's going on in the case of the individual firms here? Immigration drives down the equilibrium wage rate, reducing the marginal resource cost for individual bakeries. So we have a new wage rate of WR1 at $10. And now the marginal resource cost, or the cost of hiring an additional baker, has decreased to $10. So we have a new S marginal resource cost curve here. And here we go. Should the firm continue to employ only four workers, it's now in a situation where the marginal revenue product is greater than the marginal resource cost. In other words, the firm can afford to hire a fifth worker and it should hire a fifth worker because it will earn, well, it may not earn a profit, but it will at least break even on the fifth worker and it will be maintaining its profit maximizing level of employment. So by increasing its employment by one worker, the firm maintains that profit maximizing level of employment where MRP equals MRC. So there you have it, an increase in the supply of labor due to immigration or due to a decrease in the barriers to entry into a market or due to falling wages in competing labor markets will drive down the equilibrium wage rate and individual employers will wish to hire more workers due to the fact that the cost of hiring additional workers decreases. And the profit maximization rule says that you should hire workers up to the point where the cost of an additional worker equals the revenue the worker can earn for you. So in this lesson, we introduced and talked about how changes in the demand for labor among individual firms can affect the market equilibrium wage rate and level of employment. And we talked about how changes in the market supply of labor can affect the individual firm's profit maximizing level of employment. Here we go.